right? Yep. Alright. I was seeing this thing over here too. It's a pretty good boom mic. Alright. This is sliding down right here. Is this right there? Good. Of course. I was getting this a little bit of shakiness. Alright, so yeah, yeah, see? That's that's where the extra hands come in, bro. <laughs> So I think that's good. We have camera. We're live. We have this going on. I shouldn't need any more of this stuff. Once it starts to populate on YouTube, it takes a couple seconds with delays. Mm -hmm. It will. Um, it will start to do its thing. Damn, my lab, bro. How do you guys deal with my lab for so much years? This thing is horrible. If you change it, it's be you, so that's how oh, we deal with it. You can't change anything, bro. Horrible lap. So this is locked in now, so no, no adjusting there. So you got the whole, whole thing? Yeah. Thank you, brother. I'll see you in live in a second. It's my pocket. It, it looks like it's going live, because I it, can see the, um, it should the be there. there. Stuff. You want to So I'm going to check out my YouTube and see if it's there. Uh, Alright, so you check that and then put the tape on. Get off this and this this network so I don't mess it up. Okay, there's just folders right now. What's wrong? What just happened? I need to get that charging too. What? That? Yes. I have a multi hook going on, so that we're almost crap, son. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's my my my. You have to, cause that's when you need like a spare part or something. Yep. You and need it's everything. Like, yeah, I have it. Alright, I have another power cord here. This is some out of space there. So I brought a if I did it, because I was multitasking a lot at home. I need this. Come on. I know I brought you. Got you. Got you, son. So I want that to have its own power. This is all minimal power stuff. So I need to unplug this. The problem is, do I have one of those magnet chargers? That's using the magnet charger. These things use micro, um, here we go, there's one. I try to get all black ones. All right, so, mm -hmm. the gear is done. I know, she's like, she always bu busts my balls, like, why do you have all this stuff? I'm That's like, why yeah, you have it. I have it. Because bro. you need it. When you when you, when you need it. When you need it. Yep. To, we're forty three percent there. Uh oh, uh oh, oh, that's not coming through. Hmm? So people can't be touching us either, just yep. like me. I would say Yeah. Yeah, what a sign. Do yeah. not touch. Do not touch, yeah. All right, because then mm -hmm. it'll get out of hand. Yep. So we're still casting, right? So slideshow. And now uh, we can just tap, tap, tap because now we're already dead with the rate. So Should be good. He loves that cheesecake. <laughs> Anna was saying it too. She's like, he loves that cheesecake. Oh, the old man loved the cheese. He was a cheesecake oh, guy? Oh, cheese, cheesehead crackhead, bro. He really? It. Yeah, he loved it, man. That man loved cheesecake and he was smuggling. <laughs> <laughs> smuggled the cheesecake. It wasn't like, you know, it was like, okay, you know, one piece, two piece. No, 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 no. You leave it out, that man's killing that cheesecake. Let's see. Oh, well, you did pretty good kind of sticking it here. We have 29, 40, yeah, this I don't think you need to do anything with that. It's good. It's good, right? Yeah, it's not gonna. No one's coming around to mess with that stuff, so we're good. It should have it all set up. Streaming settings. Let me just double check. Audio. It's all good. Right. Uh, streaming settings. Video settings should be. I put a 1080p 60 fps, 6,000 kps. Platform settings is already set. I just need to have it bottom right. Okay. Right, and it does get the flowers and stuff. 
I brought stuff to keep wires neat. Right? Because the old man teaching JT how to do the uh, the cross on the grates. <laughs> Hey, right? He's doing this. Look, he's about to salute. <laughs> oh, my dad? No, no, JT's yeah. about to salute. Oh. <laughs> I brought stuff to keep everything nice and neat, bro, because sometimes, yeah, yeah. you know, you just don't want to have wires yeah. and stuff all over the place. Everything for a reason, man. Everything has a He bought this before. Let's see. Well, why he bought this? Tripod? He bought it. Yeah. I didn't buy anything new, man. Oh, okay. This guy was well prepared. This guy's like, yo, make sure they get my funeral. Uh, right? I'm like, I'm like, I didn't. A tripod. A tripod. That's I didn't awesome. get this tripod. Oh, bro. I'm wondering I'm, where I'm, the hell did you get this from, man? Yeah. And that, that, that uh, freaking microphone thing. Well, that's all me for, for car stuff, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. um. The tripod is like something I didn't want to buy. I was like, I don't want to get a tripod. I'll get a couple of chairs. Like, I need a tripod for my stuff, but I didn't want it for. I want to get all that, but I can't. You want to get what? TV too. Is that possible? Uh, That's very hard, right? Well, then that would be very difficult. We don't have to go back too far. But then you miss the space if you go to the other side too. I was thinking that, like, that is a good angle. Uh, you can't. That's the back of it. You won't be able to. Yeah. Do um, how far are you? Can we? Can this be moved, or is it too close? I don't know. I would switch it, right? I'm just. I would put. I would put. I mean, but it has the, the speakers and everything. No, you you can't. You don't want to switch that because you want to capture the. The the yeah. Uh, well, it would have got everything in one locked in area. Um, come on. I just, the only thing is if you go back, you, the man like Ricard Noir. <laughs> back yep. in days. I'm trying to find a video right now, you know what I mean? That's the thing, like... Manage videos like it should be getting up there. It is the problem with this. Like sometimes it comes up, and sometimes it doesn't. But it's there. It's like yesterday was doing a test. It's yeah. coming up. You know what I mean? Like it's so, showing. Yeah. That's good. Kinda there. Kinda there. Yeah, that one is. Yeah. Why hasn't we moved it a little bit closer? I, I just moved it a little bit. Oh, you did? I did, but. Alright, take a look at it. Yeah. yeah. Good. A little more. You're in. We got partial TV. Partial TV. Yeah. Oh, hey, partial. That's, that might work out, though. You ain't a? That's good. How much are you getting out? What do I, get? I got I got the box. I got I got three quarters of the TV. I think that might be good. You come take a look. I could do slight. Dad's viewing, right? Let me see if it pops up like that. Hey, yes, sir. Come on in, guys. Sorry. How are you doing? What's going on? Yes, sir. Oh, let me put on mask. Let me put on mask. One second. I'll oh, check this out. Okay, sure. sorry. Yeah, just setting up chat.
Can you still catch the old man? I definitely catch the old man. Okay. Okay. I mean, if it catches so much TV, it catches... Oh, yeah, mom and them are right here. So it's good. Hey, Ma. Oh, it's, the, the TV's like 80%. That's good. That's good. That's more than enough. So we catch maybe... Because also, I'm not sure we'll be able to... Because what we see right now is not exactly everything what we see. That the viewer sees? The viewer see. The viewer might see it better because the resolution... Okay. Right? Might be better with them. Like, I watched back some of the videos I had... When I'm streaming with this, it comes out pretty good. And then we have it boomed over there, so we, we don't... stand there and see how it looks in yeah. the water. It has to be a little bit more inner mod. Just, I'm talking about the same thing. Okay? So it's like right to the edge. You're good. I can see you, though. I can see both your arms. I don't need to see all the box. I can see both your arms, you know what I mean? Okay. Well, if it was Richie, I'd probably need, you know, a bigger screen, bigger lens, but... Nah. Just watch your step. Hey, Ma. Yeah. Hang in there, Ma. Hang in there. I'm just going to move this over a little bit. How you doing, boss? I 
Yes.
Mic check, mic check. something something is causing static right and it's a lot it's a lot of noise
might be better now. It's just right now for the brute. That's me rumbling around. There's a fun second to work. So, yeah. The static is there. Devil's watching the videos. That was you and the easel. Let me try one more thing. Big phones, big phones. God damn. It won't fit. It's too. Sure. Does it flex? Yeah, come on. It's this we'll see. It, it's, it's a max because I'm going to try and just. If it breaks, it breaks. I just don't want to hit the volume button. Oh, okay. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Okay. We're going to stick it onto the actual. Where? If you can. Mm -hmm. oh, great. You're gonna have to rotate. I'm gonna rotate this. You fix that, all right? It's gonna it's gonna kick out some more, okay? Something years you guys been telling me I sound horrible. Sorry. Oh, excuse me. I, I don't I have no idea about so. That's how I know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Zero idea. What the hell am I confused? That's a clip. That's a little clip. I did. Do you think about that? Because the, the mic on this thing is messed up.
something. <laughs> you know exactly no. what I'm gonna say. <laughs> I can, I can move it. Leave it? Leave it? Okay.
it's okay. It's okay. He's at church. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. If we could all come and sit, those of you who are standing in the 
Seat on this side. Antialis, uh, Romeo Richard, BB, Scott Chiney, CPB and Dot, so that's the same thing for us. Yeah, and everybody here, my mom back there, my sister, and everyone who is here too. As someone said last night, of the hymn to celebrate the life of Uncle Narain. If I may introduce myself for a couple of minutes, I am the eldest nephew on this side. And apart from being Uncle Narang's tax accountant, you know, he's been like a father to me. And uh, I've seen more of him than my dad since my dad passed away in 2009. Uh, he's a fixture in my uh, backyard because we, he and I both love outdoors and uh, I got the feeling yesterday as I was in the backyard, every time I look in the driveway, the only person who will walk in without having to call me is him. And uh, it feels me that uh, since I got this news for one week, I never messed up so much at work, but that's okay because he's the kind of person I could call on any time if I need him to step up to me somewhere for something. And I'd like to think he could do the same to me. You know, last night at the house there, it was nice to see uh, my sister giving a nice little sermon. And it's amazing what these kinds of unexpected situations and occurrences can bring up in our lives. But I, I never knew she could do that so effortlessly, so that was a good job. Uh, as we stand here today, we're gonna start this off and I will be the facilitator here until the pastor takes over. What I want to do right now, I know some people have been coming up and, you know, viewing the body. So before we go into the specific tributes, I am going to ask that anyone else who would like to come up, some folks just came in, we, you know, feel free to come up this way in that angle and come up here. And we'll do that for a few minutes before we go into the tributes.
Sorry, I walked up there without my mask, but I will take it off for convenience as I stand up front here. So it seems like everyone has had a chance to come up and, and view before we go into the tributes. You know, the first thing I wanted to do in the, the first tribute I wanted to take note of is uh, my other uncle who couldn't be here. And we speak a lot on the phone, and this has been going on recently more often than before. So outside of Uncle Narayan, I will talk to Bon. Uh, Bada, he lives in Canada, that's the younger brother. And last night I happened to see a picture that I didn't even know was out there and existed. Of the three brothers, my dad, Uncle Narayan, and Bon in that picture. I spoke to Bon last night and he sent me something here that I, I want to read. Namaste to my family and friends. Unfortunately, I'm not able to be there in person today. But I would like to honor the memory of my brother, Buddy. Buddy was my older brother. And although he was just six years older than me, he was more like a father figure as he always tried to steer me in the right direction and give me sound advice. We have shared many memories together from going up in Guyana to living in Trinidad, our time together in Canada, and my many visits to New York. This is a huge loss for our family. Buddy, I will miss you very much, especially our daily conversations. May your soul rest in peace. With love from Bada and family. That was a note sent in by the younger brother in Canada, who unfortunately couldn't make it here. I seems like all my life I've known, you know, both both brothers and almost all the other all the other siblings here I've known. But uh, but he stood out, as I mentioned before, as an elite gentleman. One of the things that I can tell you in my life here in the United States. I've been fortunate and I think blessed to be in certain situations where I happen to know and work for some very smart and brilliant people. And some, he met some of those people. Uh, and I can tell you that the feedback each one of them gave me, that man is your uncle? Yes. Man, he seems very intelligent. He knew how to conversate with people at all levels. Then at my dad's funeral, we're standing up there in the sky from our village called Maribanta. Comes up and he switches the twang that he will talk to anybody else as if he lives where Maribanta is living every day. So he could go from one extreme to the other extreme effortlessly. And what, where we are today, he has gone from one extreme to the other extreme. From being here today in person and in body, and today being with us in spirit. And uh, for my part today, I'm glad my wife didn't get here yet, because she wanted to review my speech before I give it. But I happen to have heard a poem many years ago. Someone gave me when we were at the graduation ceremony and said, you might like this, bring it. 
keep it with you. It took me almost eight years to remember the poet and to find the poem. And I want to read it here today as my main offering to this sad occasion. And, and this poem was written by a gentleman from England called Henry Scott Holland. He lived 1847 to 1918. And he's a very brilliant man, a very educated, talented individual. He was so good at what he did that he was uh, called upon to offer the main sermon when King George VII passed away. And, and you know royalty is a big thing in this world. The tone of this poem is, I am going to read this poem as if Uncle Narain is speaking to Auntie Alice. Death is nothing at all. I have only slipped away to the next room. I am I and you are you. What Whatever we were to each other, that we still are. Call me by my old familiar name. Speak to me in the same easy way, which you always used. Put no difference into your tone. Wear no forced air or solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed at the little jokes we enjoyed together. Play, smile, think of me, and pray for me. Let my name forever be the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without effect, without the trace of a shadow in it. Life means all that it ever meant. It is the same that it ever was. There is absolute, unbroken continuity. Why should I be out of mind? Because I am out of sight. I am but awaiting for you. For an interval somewhere very near, just around the corner, all is well. Nothing is past, nothing is lost. One brief moment and all will be as it was before, only better. Infinitely happier and forever we will all be one together with Christ. And I know he was a devout Christian. And I don't think he knew any bond and ne never let anything control his love. His favorite word and the word it will effortlessly roll off his tongue. He had unbounded love for the Lord. And each time we talk, he'd say, Dado, how's your mom? How's your, like, two brothers? How's my sister? How's my children? Everybody. And, and that seems to be a common theme, and he speaks to my sister, my brother, and I guess a lot of other people in this room. And as Auntie Alice told me, he was a people person. And I may, I'm sure many people here and not here can attest to that fact. You know, my dad used to say, and he went to Trinidad for the first time, he said, but he showed me a good life. It was the first time when my dad came back from Trinidad and I was in teacher's training college after being with Buddy in Trinidad, that I didn't see him 
under the influence of alcohol while he was in Georgetown. I was going to college in Georgetown. So he has had an influence not only on me, you know, he's had an influence on my father who was the eldest brother. And today as we all are here, I plead with everyone should just let the, the positive thoughts and the positive things that you knew about Uncle Buddy, let just that flow through your minds. And may this positive attitude transcend and pass on to my good uncle lying here. I think I've said enough. I would like now to open the floor to anyone who has, um, what I'll do, I'll call on a couple of people very quickly and then I'll open up the floor. So. Uh, I'll call on someone who knew Uncle Buddy and uh, who is from the same village that he uh, grew up in. He, he's been a man of four different countries. Uh, he was born in Guyana, spent a big part of his life in Guyana, lived in Canada, moved to the U.S., uh, moved to Canada and then to the U.S. So Guyana, Trinidad, Canada, U.S. And every move that he made, as far as I know, was to take his family to that next level of comfort in life. He took risks. Sometimes when he tells me, I would say, I can't do that. But it was all for the betterment. So I'm going to ask uh, Mahesh. He's Oh, okay. Mahesh, this my, my brother is here and his name is also Mahesh. So, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, so, uh, my, sorry, oh. that's, a, that's, a, that's a genuine mix-up. <laughs> yeah, they're both, they're both Mahesh. Okay. Hello, people. Brothers, sisters, family, friends, and everybody else, I'm going to make this short and sweet. Um, my name is Mahesh Bissessa, and the Bissessas and this family, Buddy and them, they were all very, very close since back in the 20s, 1920s, 30s, whatever it is. And from then to now, we were in touch with the family constantly. And it's like, there's no if, but we are family. Now, none of my family is here. I'm the only one here. And I'm speaking on behalf of myself and my family. If any of them could have made it here today, they would have been here. Unfortunately, they can't. My parents, they're sickly here in Massachusetts. And I'm here to, to, uh, to communicate their words. From my family to this family here, I want to, uh, my sincere condolences, and you guys stay strong. I'm not going to make. I'm not good at this, and I'm just going to stay off. All right? So, guys, just stay strong, and and I don't know what else to say. Sorry. Okay? Thank you. Thanks, Mahesh. Uh, sorry about the mix-up again, but um, uh, I know that my brother was so eager to, eager to step forward here. Uh, I'm going to give him a chance to come up and, and say a few words. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry for not announcing myself to the mic. When my Rampasad senior said, Mahesh, just now. I was caught between and betwixt the way this Rampasad used to call for me. So I said, I know he's a man that generally don't make mistakes. So I don't know if he was really saying, okay, Mahesh, it's your turn. But he said Mahesh, and I wasn't so certain whether anyone else was there. So I stepped forward. On that note, Chachanarain was one of two persons that would call me Mahesh. 
one of two persons. The other one being my late father. So that's why I said, when he said Mahesh, maybe he was going with the flow of things. Chachanarayan was the epitome of my father. I say that to say that being what he was, he was a family man. He always looked out for his family. When I came to New York the first time, he was searching for me. And that tells you something about him. We were lost in communication, and we were lost in contact. But the mere fact that when I touched down, Chachana Ryan was there looking for me, even bombing down Ram's door for Mahesh. And the way he pronounced my name, not Mahesh, Mahesh, that's the way my dad called me. Mahesh, and it rings a bell. It's a simple way of saying it, but deep on the tone, they're very forceful in what they're saying. Get a grip of yourself. That's what it means. He had a sense of humor. Within the family, I can tell you, his sense of humor was phenomenal. I recall him telling me a joke in Ram's garage when he was among his colleagues and they had to pull words and to speak of the word on the word. And one of his colleagues pulled the word Beethoven. We know all know, know what Beethoven is. That slow, soft symphony you would want to hear on a Sunday morning. So Chacha said, where's Beethoven, boy? There gotta be a hat over him. There gotta be a hat over him, there gotta be good bread. That was the kind of guy he was. And he set the tone that day, he said. If you looked at this body lying here, and you look at Bond, and you look at my father, you see, what it means by chip don't fall from the park on the block. I can recall seeing a picture of my grandfather. And if you were to put that against the image of these three persons, they are the one and the same. And if you follow art, you will know what I mean. The car of, this, of, the, of, this, of the forehead, the receding hairline, and everything else. So I had to take a look just now to confirm what I was saying, and to conform with the lines I have. They are one and the same. And that's a typical example of where the chips don't far fall, fall far from the block. So his immediate family, I normally call Auntie Alice Chachi, Richard, and the guy that had my hairstyle, Best kind. All right. Um, you have my sincere condolences, and it's coming from my family. Rampasad is the only one that has Rampasad from this side. The others have Pasad. My sister now has Samuel. So from this side of the family again, you have my sincere condolences, and may his soul rest in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad my brother mentioned the, that I'm the only one on this side that has the ramp facade. And, and that was not by design. I was also, I thought I was a facade until I had to go get my passport. And they told me my name had to be Chandrika Pasad Jogi. Because my dad's title was not on the birth certificate. And I didn't have a problem with that until I missed the flight in Trinidad and had to stay till the next day because they kept calling for passenger jokey and I ignored it. <laughs> as soon as I got back to Guyana, I said, you know what, I'm going and get that Rampasad title. So that was that. I, I want to call in someone now, and here's the funny thing about calling this person. Uncle Narain heard about this uh, young man from Wakenham, from Sarah. He's a preacher. and. 
He said, Dawud, how come you never tell me this? I said, Jeff, well, I tell you everything, but certain things I didn't think it would be relevant for me to tell you. Uh, this guy and I grew up together in the village, and if you had told me in those days that he would have become a pastor, I would have bet everything on it. He didn't seem to be inclined in that direction. I feel very good to have been associated with him for the dramatic turn he made in life. And Uncle Narayan had mentioned that, you know, one day I will hear him preach. I felt this was the most opportune time. And for a few minutes, I'm going to call on my old friend Shankar over here to take the podium. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior. The Lord declare, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy, the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them that which are in trouble by the comfort we with ourself has been comforted by God. I want to thank you on behalf of this beloved brother. As my dear friend is mentioning, me and he had a, a lot of conversation and when he heard that I'm stepping up in, 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 in this kind of faith, he said, man, one day I got to hear you. But not knowing you're going to be a day like today, I know the body is there, but the spirit is looking on what is happening, what is taking place. And today I got the opportunity and privilege where I'm going to share in the world, where I believe according to the scripture that is given us from Paul the Apostle, who was one of the mightiest men and servant of God, Lord Jesus, who didn't get to rub shoulder to shoulder with Jesus. But well, he became one of the greatest disciples. And he has written unto us here today. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be on uniform. About who? About those who fall asleep in death. We got to understand that this body, this flesh died, but this spirit is still alive. And today Paul is telling us, he is uniform us, he's calling us to attention. And he's telling us, though this body might see that he lay in this coffin, but his body, that is not the finish, that is finished finish for him as yet. But today he also began to say, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. When we are in Christ Jesus, we got a hope. We got a hope and the hope tells us that Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, came on this earth. And he died and rose on the third day. He has paid a penalty. He has paid a price in full for each and every one of us. That we may might be saved. For we believers that Jesus Christ died and rose again. And so we believe that God who bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. So that day we are going to end up. We are going to go where Jesus is. We are going to meet him face to face. What a day that going to be when we reach with Jesus. According to, the, according to the Lord's word. We tell you that we have. We who are still alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not proceed these who have fallen asleep we we gonna meet up with him if we left behind we will surely see that day when the Lord will come we will surely be a witness for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of an archangel and will and with the triumph of of call of God and the death in Christ shall rise. After that, we who are still alive and are left with, 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 will be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. Do we believe that? Do we believe that today? We have that hope. We have that readiness. We have that faith. We have that trust. That one day that we will reach our maker face to face. By dying, 
in, in, in this mortal body by dying is not the end of us. Amen. Life is not finished there. We got to reach to the Savior because the Savior is who is the Lord. Therefore, I encourage you today that this word that the Lord has given unto us will surely become into fulfillment. Thank you for your attention. God bless. When I suggested to Richard last night that I'm going to have my friend come, I was like, I just hope he doesn't disappoint me, man, Richard. I said, so, um, Dialo, couldn't you do better? But um, I'm very impressed. Uh, like I said, he, when he made the turn in life, I was so happy for him and today. Hearing him preach for the very first time also, and I know Uncle Narain said, one of these days we're going to have to go listen to him, Dado. So, Judge, you heard him. And I, he's become a pastor, and he's much, I think you and him have as much faith in the Lord that you always tell me about. Thanks again, Shankar, for coming. And now we, uh, I'm going to call on one more person, and, and then we'll open the floor to anybody who wants to come up. I'm going to ask... I am Uncle Narain's nephew. I'm going to call on my nephew that I see in the back here to step up and say a few words. Uh, Mikey. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, some of you know me. Uh, my name is Mikey. I'm Mati Jayanti's grandson. Mati Hemanomi, Mati Bibinomi, uh, Richard Romel. I think I know you guys, I do just we haven't really met or spent much time together. But um, my Nana passed, Uncle Dada's dad, and uh, my Ajo passed, my dad's dad. They both passed in Guyana, I was here in the States, I was not able to see either of them or say goodbyes. So uh, I'm actually glad I can be here today to mourn with the family. Uncle Narayan is the um, kind of person that you don't forget, and I think um, in a good way. And I think if you were going to ever leave something behind, that would be the ideal legacy to leave, is that someone can say that I knew that man, and he was genuinely a good man. There's no better thing to leave behind. Uh, anytime Uncle Narayan we saw him, it was always at a family gathering, and if he saw me, or if he saw my older brother, he would say, wait, you're Vicky or you're Mikey? And you're the middle one, right? Yeah, okay, all right. He always wanted to make sure he knew he, who he was talking to. He didn't want to make a mistake. And then he would always ask, you know, how are you doing? How's your mom? And then he would say, you're married now, right? You got any kids? How do kids do? And he always, he was always interested. He was always genuinely interested in knowing how someone was doing. He didn't just breeze by and say, you know, hello, and kept going. He always stopped. He always made a point to ask and to find out how everyone is doing. And to me, that's more helpful and that's more genuine for a person to be genuinely concerned about another human being. And so that is the legacy that Alcana Ryan is leaving behind. Uh, you guys should know that Uncle Dad read in the poem. He only left you here now, but he's still waiting for you. And you're going to see him again when the time comes. Uh, thank you guys all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. you know, one of my friends from Florida called me last night. A couple of years ago, one of my aunts passed away from my mother's side in Guyana. And now, you know, Uncle Narayan passed away, and so he said, he said, Dado, why, you know, after these next? <laughs> well, <laughs> meaning we are the next generation. Uh, when I t got here earlier, you know, and I see so people trickling in, it's so good to see so many of uh, people I haven't seen for a while and 
it's a good thing that you can see people here. So it takes an event like this sometimes to see people that you don't see in ages. And I know everybody's sitting there and maybe there's some of you who would like to step up here and pay your last tribute to Uncle Narain Church. So I'd like to open the floor to anyone who would like to come forward here and say a few words. Everyone, my name is uh, Bola Omtare. I'm a friend of the family. Uh, Ramel and I, we've, we, we're brothers, so that means he's my father as well. Um, there are two things that I remember specifically. I remember the first time I met this wonderful man, and I remember the last time I met him, and so many memories in between. And uh, my condolences to the family, um, you're in my prayers. Uh, the Lord will strengthen you um, to everyone as well. The friends, he's gone and he's in a better place. I have confidence in that. The first time I, re I met, I don't call him buddy, I call him Mr. Rampasad. <laughs> Out of respect, that's, just, that's Mr. Rampasad. Um, it, it was in the 90s and I was at his house and he came home. <laughs> and I just remember the love that he has for his family. He was a family man. He was a family man. He was tough at times, uh, but he was a family man. And I love that about him. I love that he was genuine. He was sincere. And I appreciate that. Um, and as the man of God said that this is not the end of life. This is part of life. And our job is to take the lessons that we've learned from him and apply it to our lives. The last time I saw Mr. Rampasad in person uh, was at Jeremiah's birthday party last year. And I remember because he was himself. He was a person that always wanted people around him to be comfortable. If you were if you were standing up and he was sitting down, he would say, here's my seat. I remember all the time taking up a burger, taking up a hot dog, and I appreciate that. This is the time where we really appreciate life and those that God has placed in our lives. I'll never forget this man, how generous he was, and again, his genuine desire for, for people to be comfortable and to be happy. Um, and I pray that that will impact us and we'll live our lives the same way. Everyone that's around us to go out our way and make them comfortable, make them smile, make them happy and do the things that God has called us to do. So again, condolences. Um, this is not the end. We shall meet again by the grace of God. God bless everyone. Thank you, brother. Uh, I know Romel was a bit proud of you. Uh, the one common theme that we hear, we hear all the time from everybody who's come up here so far is that he was a people person. You know, this is not something you can say about everybody, right? We are, because we are not, not all made of the, of the same uh, genetic makeup, the same exposure to life, the same level of intelligence. And nothing wrong with it. Nothing's wrong with it. The word they use in psychology towards introvert and extrovert. But he got that talent and that human uh, special touch that came to him, as I said before, very effortlessly. And I, I, with that being said, is there anyone else before we hand this over to uh, the pastor? And I know Seema is there, so Seema, please come forward.
they can introduce themselves. Um, I'm Amanda. I'm Uncle Buddy's niece. My oh. mom is Jamaican. I'm Angelina. I'm also Uncle Buddy's niece. I see him. There's also another cousin missing. She's she's shy. So I'll definitely say her name is Ambika. She is also another cousin and she'll be known. So I will talk about my experiences with Uncle Buddy. Um, when we lived at Vanderbilt Street, my mom had told me that, oh, our uncle and, and our aunt and the cousins are going to be you know, coming by and they're gonna stay for a while. So I'm like, okay, great. And that's before, you know, we established this tight brothership between Romel and Richard. So I said, great, more brothers for me because <laughs> I don't have brothers, I have a sister. Um, I don't have a sister, it's just my brother. So more brothers for me, hey, I'm more than, more than happy. But um, that time in the 90s stuck out for me and those are my memories that i will cherish because we all uh there were there were barbecues there were parties there were gatherings and and, and this is what family is and this is our bond and uncle buddy was one of a kind very nonchalant very humble um yeah he just 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 one of a kind, just a chill, chill uncle. And, and those are my memories. And to Auntie Alice, Richard, Bernard, uh, Romel, you know, we, we're here for you. Um, uncle Buddy has, has entered the heaven gate and he's watching down on all of us and you. And he's not your guardian angel. He's also there, my dad. So he has company. And. No, just embrace all your memories and, you know, great dad and great uncle and we all just remember our memories and the good times. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys know, I'm Uncle Buddy's DJ. Oh, personal <laughs> DJ. Personal <laughs> DJ. I travel with him. We are all <laughs> um, well, always, always, girl, are you going to help me put on this song? I, I'm so willing to because he's a great person and he's so sweet. And my mom and all their sisters, they love their brother. And I hate that everybody has to be here today to do this. And I wish we were all meeting on a better occasion. The last time I seen him, um, I believe I was old enough to receive a modelo. <laughs> yeah, for the first time. I, I couldn't believe. And I, I think he was glad too. I think he thought I was 21. I'm 20. <laughs> and he also gave me a white cloth. <laughs> my uncle went. He's amazing. Amazing. He always made everybody comfortable. And he wanted everybody to have a good time. He never wanted anybody to leave his house. <laughs> we didn't have to. And he would always put the cat away from me because <laughs> I was scared growing up. I was very scared. <laughs> and great uncle, my uncle Jai, he was with there with the, the two of them are up there with my grandparents and my uncle Jokey and my auntie Betty. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. I, I can tell you, I didn't plan it this way, Richard, or Auntie yeah, Alice or Romel, but it's amazing how everybody comes up here, seems to have the thought to express some different aspects of Uncle Narang's life. And I want to touch on Angie's point a little bit. Uh, he had a love for music, and the reason I think I can say that is because we seem to share a taste that's going out of style. Real old Indian music. Sometimes when I play it, my kids think, what the hell was that? Well, one man I could play it for any time, anywhere, 
Anyhow, was Uncle Buddy, and then he will say it this way, where you get that one from, right? <laughs> well, that's because he had a very rare taste, and as I said, it's a taste that seems to be eroding. But the good thing, and the one thing I always told him about in that type of music is probably the deepest in emotions than any other type of music that you could find. All music is emotional, but I think there's something about that style of music that touches you very deeply. Uh, I, before we get ready to hand it over to the pastor, is there anybody else who would like to step up and say a few words? Okay, so, and the, to, to kind of put the wrap up on this part of the program, I am, uh, not to run the show here, but I have a last couple of verses that I would read. Sorry, this part I don't need to read. I have this in my head. And I remember the last place I'm, read these few words or made, you know, repeated these few lines was that uh, uh, a very nice lady that passed away many years ago, my wife's uh, grandmother, and I will repeat it today because it's a couple of lines that belongs to life and not to any one individual, but sets the pace as we go about our lives every day because I feel we all come in this life and in this world not with a written purpose or a logo on our chest. We take it one day at a time and we get to where we get to with our effort, our energy, and our way of life. Uh, th this is how these couple of words go. I have to try to research where it came from, but one of these days. It, and it goes like this. The rich man in his chariot will ride. And the beggar, a.k.a. the poor man, will crawl at his side. But in the general race, we are all going at the same pace. Because in the end, we all end up in the same place. This is a path we all will have to walk. And whenever I, I come to or go to a funeral, I always hope and wish a lot of people out there will digest this event or the death and see if anything they could bring to their life to make life better, not just for themselves, but for other people around them. And one lesson it has always taught me is to increase the level of hum humility, humbleness you bring to your family, to your friends, and to everybody that you meet. And as one guy used to tell me, when you humble, you never stumble. <laughs> With those few words, I think the pastor is here, so I would like to hand it over to the pastor, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man.
Praise the Lord this evening. I am glad to be here this evening, amen. To be where two and three are gathered in the name of Jesus. He is in the midst. And that's why I am glad this evening because I know that Jesus is in the midst this evening. Amen? Amen. So I welcome each and every one of us, families and friends, this evening. Amen? We are having the service this evening to dedicate to the Lord on behalf of our dear brother, our dear departed brother, Brother Narayan Rampasad. Amen? Amen. So, this evening, I will ask our pastor to open us in a word of prayer. Could we all stand? Dear God and Father, as we look up to the heavens one more time, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and risen Savior, we give you thanks, O Lord, for all things. Today, we give you thanks, O Lord, for receiving our brother. We give you thanks, O Lord, for having your way in our lives. Every individual, we pray, O oh God, your blessings upon them. And dear Father, as we continue this evening, we ask you, Lord, to let your anointing rest upon us in this place. O oh God, we ask you to have your way in our lives. We thank you again for sanctifying and sealing and blessing this service all on behalf of Brother Narayan Rampasad. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I don't know if everyone has a song sheet. If not, it's right over there. We have Brother Rex, he will share it out if you lift your hand if he doesn't have one of these. This evening we're going to sing, When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Amen? Amen. So you are free this evening to clap and sing and make a joyful noise unto the Lord this evening. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you wish to stand, you can stand this evening. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace. Oh, 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. And we have one more song to sing. What a friend we have in Jesus. And this is one of Brother Narayan's favorite songs. What a friend we have in Jesus. And truly is what a friend he has. Oh, he has in Jesus. Amen. They have the Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What a friend he has in Jesus this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to come. Yes. 
up next. Uh, we're going through all three at the same time. Uh, hope I do this speech correct. Uh, in my hand, um, the last thing my dad did, uh, his last day, he uh, shred bottles to make money. All right, so it's. I love this all the time. Every time I come in the house, it, it's, it's symbol of him. The last last days, minutes. Um, mostly, he just did it to uh, make money for his family. Just for buy to the last minute. As many is he just make sure he was. He was definitely uh, knew he was not feeling well, and he still went out and he did it just because you know that extra little change will just come in handy. Yeah. Um, uh, I didn't understand that when mom told me, and I was like, why would he go to, why would he go, you know, he's not feeling well, you know, the weather's bad, why would he go out there and go, you know, try bottles, why, he, everything's fine. But uh, TV was playing this morning, and uh, there was, the guy said, had the same, he was, mostly said, uh, life must be lived forward, but only can be understood backwards. So, meaning, he had like one more lesson to, to show us. Uh, the guy was just full, full of lessons. Uh, i give you some quick ones. Uh, my first car, driving stick shift, never drove stick shift before. And he would always tell me, you're shifting too fast, you know, you're just going to the next gear and you're just we're going to work at that time. You just keep on going on at me. I was like, oh my God, this guy won't stop with the ship. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, another one would be just, just working on the car, you know. He's like, you know, you're using too much strength sometimes. You know, just, sometimes you just got to let everything help you. Get a bigger pipe and it will give you some leverage to just get the job done. Don't, don't strain yourself. Uh, the last important one, and Bo knows this, and everybody, all friends and family, be punctual. Very punctual. Uh, my lesson that I learned is the hard way. I just couldn't wake up in the morning. Um, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to leave you. I'm, I'm going to leave you. Don't get up in the morning. And I, I just, it's like, ah, possibly. Oh, uh, man, he left. And we worked together. That's the problem. We, I was 17, and we worked together in the same place. It was in Valley Street. And I was like, he left me. I was like, I can't believe this. I had to get on my bicycle, get to work, or else I wouldn't make money. Like, he really was very punctual. Very stern with stuff like that, but it's a, it's a good life lesson. And, and uh, this will go pretty quick with this part. It's the last life lesson I think he wanted to show was that we should just be there for everybody. Pass on the story of who, uh, of, of you if you know them or anybody in your family, just stay communicated. Uh, it, you know, sometimes you have to be stern, and sometimes you have to be loving, and. It, 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 it's very important to, to show all that. That's the la I think that was the last lesson he showed me. Like you just need to get up, take care of your family, take care of everybody around you, and just just be loving. You know. Um, I, I, I'll probably wrap this up, but I wanted to just give a special like thank you for everybody that just there for the last days, days before this when he was there. I mean, everybody was there to help him all the time because it was a back. It was really just. You have to help each other. That was his thing. It's like really you have to help each other, and that, that's what we go by. Um, but I definitely want to definitely thank anybody for coming out, family members. Uh, I definitely want to thank uh, Auntie Bibby, Auntie Hema, Auntie Jenna for being there for my mom while all this is going on. And, and it's very, it's very important that, that, that she has that support. And I, I'm, I'm thankful you guys are there all the time for her. Uh, but I, I guess that's all. Um, Pops look great, you know, always looks good all the time, and still right now. And thank you guys for, for do everything you guys do. Um, yeah. <laughs> Say it there. All right. All right. I want to reach out. And this is this is from Alvin. I'm Richard. Let me reiterate. Thank you, everybody, for, for coming. And, uh, for the last few days. <laughs> all right, I'll read for, for Richie. It's camera side, that's all. 
On behalf of my family, I want to express my sincere thanks to my family, friends, and the visitors who traveled both near and far to be here and part of the service. Losing my father is one of the most difficult things I've gone, ever gone through. I'm standing here today. I realize how fortunate I, I was to have my father. There are no words expressed the influence in my life. It is through example that I learned who I want to be and how I want to be remembered. My father was a hard working, strong, and he had love for him. He had love for life and a great host. He loved his family and he was deeply devoted to my mother and his two siblings. We did not always see eye to eye on everything, of course. When I was in my late teens, early 20s, I thought I knew everything. We had some run-ins, but I, I still cannot imagine not to hear my dad's footsteps up the stairs to see him watering the garden, feeding the cats, way too many times, if you ask me. I cannot imagine so many things, but I must face reality that he passed onto another life. All right. Let me try. You got it. Let, Let me try. You got it. Let me see. You know, my dad lived a good life. He was hardworking, and he's always provided for his family. One of my fondest and uh, best memories of my dad is like when my mom would go to England, and uh, he was left in charge of the, uh -huh. the three of us. And uh, he would always, you know, pick us up from school halfway in between lunch to take us to get something to eat, you know. And um, he always tried different places for us when he was away. I, I remember us going everywhere to eat, places that, you know, and maybe we didn't do it with, we're all together, but for us, the three of you know, the four of us, we would go everywhere. Shark barbecue. Yeah, that's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> and, you know. But he wasn't such a good, I remember he wasn't such a good cook. So that's maybe why he had a thing. And uh, that's kind of how I learned to cook myself because of my dad. Uh, and it wasn't because, uh, you know, he made me all these unusual dishes. And uh, I figured that I might as well start learning how to cook so we can eat a little bit uh, normal. <laughs> but in the end, he, he ended up being a very good cook. As time passed, he was a very good cook. And I think that's where I got one of my things from, is seeing that how he tried, I started to try. You know? And uh, it's showing, you know, life of my dad had its moments, and it was always look back and uh, smile on those good days. My dad was a good man, and his friends and family will always attest to this, and I hope that someday I'll be able to give back as much uh, as he has given to us and the others around him. And, uh, okay, so let me try to go back to where I, 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 I stopped. You know, I wanted to thank everybody for coming out. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of support. Thank you guys. Thank my aunt right here. Thank my aunt for coming to see my mom every day. You know, staying with her, sleeping with her. It's, it's a big deal. You know, where I'm not so good at stuff like that. I'm glad my aunt's a good help. And everybody that showed up every night at my house praying, you know, celebrating my dad's life, I appreciated it. I really did. You know, my dad was a, for me, he was a tough man. You know, he was a tough man for me. But I understood, you know, I understood where he was coming from. And yes, we did not see eye to eye, but he was a good man. He was a good man. He did love his family a lot. And he did his very best, very best right until the end. All right, thank you guys. And, and now we're going to read uh, what my brother, uh, Bernard. Well, if you could say it himself, Bernard, you want to say it yourself? I can say it myself, man, if you want. Okay. Can you put me next to the speaker? Yeah. yeah. Hope you got so much feedback. Let's try it. Let's try it. He's in Canada. Okay. Yeah, that's why he couldn't be here. I can take it here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody got you. Oh, uh, hey, everybody. You know what I mean? Um, thank you for all the support that you give my family. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm stuck in Canada. I couldn't make it there. Uh, it's, it's kind of brutal on me because I, you know what I mean? It's it's not hard seeing, you know, see my brothers and my mom and go through this and I'm not there. You know what I mean? My son wants to see my, my wife wants to see me. You know what I mean? It's, it's really difficult right now, but I appreciate all the help that everyone put forth. You know what I mean? For my mom and my brothers, you know, I mean, I know it's it was fast and it's it's hard, 
things like this, it's hard. You know what I mean? My dad spoke to me the night before this happened. You know what I mean? And when, when he called me, it was weird to thing. I told my wife, I was like, yo, let me take this call from my dad, you know, because I really don't, he calls me at a certain time, but it was something so different. You know what I mean? So I said, let me talk to him because, you know, sometimes you know in life that at that point you need to speak to someone because you never know you get the chance to speak to them again. And that's the chance. That's what I took that night when I spoke to him. And I'm going to read you something, but before I read you something, I'm going to say something about my dad. And I, this is the beginning part. Listen, for me, my dad was a hard man, just as my brother said. He was hard. But I was a real harder child. I was a stubborn child, and I gave my dad a hard time, trust me. That, I have one story I would tell you guys. When I went to see my dad, my dad worked in Brazil, and he was in the interior. And I went there. My dad left me. I was a mischievous kid, broke the windows. They didn't know where I was. Everybody was searching for me. I was scared of my dad, but he was going to beat me. So I just hid under the box the whole evening. <laughs> the thing is, they followed me after a few hours. You know, my dad was mad, but he wasn't, you know, he was just happy to see his son. And I think that's what it is for family with him is, even though he gets mad at sometimes or whatever, but he still loves his family. And that's the most important thing. You know what I mean? In life that you could, you could understand these things, you know, you could, you know, it doesn't fit in here for yourself and be like, you know, this is my family, this is who I love. So this is my little thing I wrote about my dad. I'm sorry, man, I know I'm taking, you know, a long time, but here, this is how I see our dad in my eyes. He loves his family and he would show it by his hard work to make life better for us. He has never given up attitude. No one will stop him when he wants to accomplish his goals. He sets out for himself. He loves my mom, even if they have different ways of doing things. And sometimes didn't agree. They had the understanding that they were a unit and would always come together as one. He always showed us the importance of doing things for ourselves. He protected us from harm. He was very organized. So please, touch his stuff or else. Never touch his stuff. He loves his cars and he loves cleaning them. He, it brings joy to have a clean, shiny car. Same as his home. He had a place for everything and it was super clean. Move it sometimes and or else will come up again. <laughs> there were so many qualities, good and sometimes it wasn't so good how he was, but here what? He is only human and on this earth, the little time we have to share with our family and friends, it's a learning and teaching moment in life. But at the end, we love our father. We miss him until we see him in life. I love you, dad, grandpa, husband, father, Daughter-in-law, we love you very much, Pops. And you know, what I mean, again, to everyone, I love that you know everybody came together for my dad. My dad would have loved this, and you know, what I mean, I thank you very much for my my brother Richie Romel and mom. You know, I wish I was there, but my voice is the only thing I could give to comfort you guys. I love all of you guys. Love you. But well, one second, Jody wants to say. say. Thank you very much, guys. Right. Thank you. I want to say one more thing about that punctual part. Anybody who knows that um, I passed that, that lesson on forward to a lot of people here that if you're not ready, I'm leaving you. I'm just going. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Thank you. We are here to pay tribute to Brother Nara. And the floor is open for anybody who wants to say something. But we keep it as brief, like, talks is two minutes. Anybody wants to come, come forward? something here. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, there is no more time for cousin Narayan on this earth. The good Lord 
one can for himself now. Um, from my, sister, my sister Julie, or of course she's not here neither, she's in Diana, but she sent this little script to me. Um, Cousin Narayan, you have run the face, fought the good fight. The Lord will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. The Lord gives and the Lord keeps. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Cousin Narayan, we all will miss you. Anybody else yes. is coming to pay tribute? just want to thank everyone for coming out here this evening, taking the time from your busy schedule and your life to be here to comfort us at this time of grief. <laughs> but he was a, was a very warm brother to us every time we go to his home. Um, every time we go to his home, he as much as he had his immediate family, he feels so happy to have his relatives visiting. He doesn't, he don't know what to do for you when you come to his home. He gets excited, he gets happy, he wants you to eat and drink. He wants to play his music, he wants to dance, he likes to celebrate, he loves life. He loves people. He was a strict dad to his boys. And I think between him and Alice, they did wonders. They raised three good, well-mannered boys that will make any woman a happy woman, a lucky woman. They have a lot of attractive qualities <laughs> that they have learned from their dad, how to treat a woman. And I really can see that in them. He, he, was, a, he was a very, family man worked hard to build and keep his family happy whatever it takes he was out there and also alice they worked very hard together to build a nice life a family life and family meant a lot to him we're going to miss him very much we have great memories and the memories that we shared would stay forever in our hearts and he will be in our hearts forever. My brother, we would always love you. And we know you're going to get a resting peace, a resting place with the Almighty. You're in a better place. And we always will keep you in our hearts forever. Amen. We love you, brother. We're going to miss you very much. Thank you, everyone, again. Amen. Thank you so much. Glory to God. You want to say something? Yeah, yeah. Other guys? Uh, Just one last thing. One last thing. Say, Anand, oh, is that you up in the podium? <laughs> yeah, it's me. There's a lot of things we learned from him. I will tell you one. Ramel and I were <laughs> working on a car, and he's there. And Ramel's like, My dad needs a crescent wrench. I'm like, What's a crescent wrench? I'm like, He's like, Boy, get, This is the one, not that one. Give him that one. <laughs> And I learned my tools knowing this guy was all about cars, cleaning them, fixing them. And he passed on a lot to his sons. They all had many, many cars. 
They're still around. Not much going on with them, but they're still around. He's full of discipline. He passed that on to his kids, to his family members, to us. You know, we miss him, but he's always around. Right. And I know that he's looking down. He's happy right now because we're all here. And he wants us to be happy, not sad. So we take this moment and remember him and remember nothing but good stuff about him because that's all he had. Right. You know, life is short. Enjoy every moment, every second of it. People count down to Fridays because it's an end of work day. I always tell people, look, if it's a Monday, enjoy Monday. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, whomever it is. Enjoy them. And I know I'm going around saying the same thing right now. Enjoy your life. Enjoy everyone. Make the best of everything. My sincere condolence to all of you guys. We're here. You're very strong. Very proud of you all. Keep it up. And life goes on. Uh, I just want to reiterate a lot of what everyone has said here. And I, I know when we uh, start, start met each other in high school and we'd go over to Mel's house and be part of their family, they welcomed us in, always fed us, always took care of us, always asked how our families are doing. And that's why we're here, because uh, we are family. And that's the kind of environment that uh, Noreen did for us. He, he, he opened his family up in his house to us because he knew we take care of his family and they would take care of ours. And that's why we're here at that's And I, in my recent time, my mom just had a stroke and I had that moment where I could realize that she wasn't gonna be here. And I knew when I saw Richie and Ramel and Alice in that house for a minute, and I knew that moment, that stroke. And I understand how it feels. And I think that's why we need each other to help each other through this and we'll be there always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you guys wanna say something? Oh <laughs> uh, yes, um, I'd like to reiterate what everyone said. And, um, just to wrap us off, uh, he's a very disciplined man, hard worker, family man, father figure to all of us. And um, you know, like Anton said, man, you know life is just comes and goes. So enjoy all your moments. And um, my thoughts and prayers to the family and my condolences. George wants to say something really quick, his memory of when he got uh, kicked out because he put his foot on the chair. <laughs> I'm thankful for no one with the rapid thought. Like he said, we grew up with each other, came over, it was like a second home to us. It wasn't a time where he didn't want us to leave and it took you about two hours because he always had a lesson to teach you. <laughs> and I appreciate that. Help me to be the man who I am today. And I love him and I love you guys for that. And my deepest condolences. Very well. And I'm going to share one more thing. Take the mask off. Sorry, I spoke for a minute. I just want to share one last thing is that um, he loved to celebrate. I remember him coming to my wedding um, and him just celebrating, and he was a man that loved to celebrate. There's a reason to celebrate. If it's sunny outside, it's barbecue. Let's celebrate. And, and that's something that we should just appreciate, um, being able to celebrate. This is a celebration of his life. So just remember that, like, in everything, as Adam said, let's celebrate life. Celebrate each other. So, God bless everyone. He doesn't make the word of God with anything. He preaches the word of God for being to do. And this is what God and I love about Father Peter. He, he always had a, a nice smile and, and a warm greeting for everyone. Else. Yeah. This, I will remember my brother with a big smile on his face. Always talking and making somebody feel good. Amen? Yeah. With that said, let us welcome my pastor, our pastor. All those who know Pastor Peter will know what I'm saying. He's one of the few true men of God there is. Let us welcome my pastor, Pastor Peter, to the pulpit.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey. When we say glory to God, it, it means that we are giving God praise. Amen. Amen. Let's do it. We are praising him for the life of our brother. Amen. 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 You know, um, I am so thankful to be privileged to be his pastor. Amen. For the little time that uh, I knew him. His greeting to me was a motivation. He motivated me. Amen. Amen. And even though I have pastored for approximately 40 years, different churches, uh, but when this man came and he would hug me and he, you know, <laughs> His testimony. His testimony was a prayer. That's right. Yes, he would testify and then he would, you know, while testifying, he would say, Father, Lord, so and so and so and so. That's how he, he would testify. Amen. Amen. And I want to say, I am privileged to be here this evening. Amen. 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 I know uh, the family. I was also privileged to do his marriage vows. They renewed their vows. Uh, I can't remember what year it was. But uh, he and his wife renewed their marriage vows. Amen. Amen. And it was a big celebration. Well, let me let you know. Today is another celebration. Amen. Because we are celebrating his life. When I say his life, not the physical life, but the life that he is, we believe, I believe, Amen. that he, the Bible declares, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. And I believe that he is present with the Lord. Amen. Put your hands together, give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. For that. Yes. I have a little uh, scripture that I would like to read for us. And um, it is taken from the book of Ecclesiastes. And I will be reading two, two portions of that scripture. I'm reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And it reads, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. I would go to chapter 12 and uh, verse 13, and it declares, this is the end of this book, which was written by King Solomon. 
one of the wisest men upon the face of this earth. And he declared, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let us pray. Father and God, one more time, we approach your throne in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and risen Savior. And dear God, as we gather today to celebrate the life of our brother, we give you thanks, O Lord, for your rich anointing, your presence, your holy presence. Yes, Lord, your presence in this place. Touch each and every individual, every home represented. I pray, O oh God, that your will be done. And you would touch my mouth that I would speak that souls will be saved that we O oh God will be blessed and you will be glorified you O oh God will be magnified we give you thanks and praise in no other name but that of Jesus Christ our Lord and risen Savior Amen I want to say thanks be unto God for the entire family. That is to Richard Romel, is it? And his mom, uh, his wife, that is Narayan's wife. Amen. Amen. It is a blessing to know you all. And uh, I just want to say thank God that we are here. We are in the land of the living. Amen. But one of these days, we will have to travel the same road that he is on. Amen. The Bible declares it is appointed unto man once to die. But after this, come the judgment. <clears throat> there is a time when you know we believe that jesus christ is coming again Amen. and when he comes <coughs> he will take the church Amen. but <coughs> in order for him <coughs> to take us this mortal shall put on immortality says the word of god amen amen <coughs> open it Thank you. Uh, Sister Bibi is my mama. <laughs> Bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sister Bibi, Sister Hema, and all these brethren. Amen. Amen. And, uh, I know them well. They know me too. Amen. Amen. And um, it is not a, 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 a few days. It has been years. Uncle Sonny? Amen. It has been years, amen, we have known each other. And I want to thank God for them. Amen. <clears throat> well, back to the message. As I was saying, When Jesus comes, he will be taking the church. Amen. The church. So this mortal body 
shall be transformed. And it says this mortal <clears throat> shall put on immortality. Amen. And that is spirit. Amen. Amen. So your spirit will ascend to heaven. Amen. Like today, I believe that Brother Narayan spirit you see when God created man in fact not when he created when he made man when he made man there are two things one at one time God created man and that was when he created the spirit Amen. and the second time was when he made man he took man uh, uh, out of the dust of the ground and he made man and he breathed into man yes. the breath of life and that is what has left our brother amen, amen. at this time and he it would the spirit went back to the maker Bless the Lord. Amen. amen and every one of us one of these days when God called you home, I would have you to know that your body will be all this flesh and all the natural man will remain right here. Amen. 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 But your spirit will be with the Lord. Yes. However, as the scripture says here now, there's a time for everything upon the face of this earth. A time to be born, a time to die, a time, of, you know, we, 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 uh, I heard several people say that, you know, Brother Narayan, he liked to celebrate. Amen. Amen. Well, there was a time for celebration. Yes. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> and he celebrated. And, and thank God that he celebrated. But you know something? He knew that it is important to honor God, to serve God, to, you know, this man, he would come to church. And uh, the, the, the week, if he come to church this week, <clears throat> he ha would have an envelope, you know. And, but for last week and week before, if he did not come, he had two envelopes or three envelopes that for last week and week before. Amen. That is how much he honored. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It is not, I'm not, 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 not about the money I'm talking about. It's about the honesty and sincerity. Amen. 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 I just want to say, our God, he is an honest God. Amen. He is the God <coughs> that will justify and judge all men, everything. Amen. Amen. On a level playing field. He is not going to be partial with anybody. Amen. He is a just God. <coughs> and he will uh, let, you know, as, as um, Solomon says here, you know, for God shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing. Who think they're doing things and nobody will know because it's dark and because you hide away in a room. Let me tell you, your, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the entire earth. Amen. Beholding the good and the evil thereof. That's right. Yes. <laughs> So let me let you know, our God, and he sees, he knows he is not the God
God that have ears that cannot hear and have eyes and cannot see. <coughs> right now, right now, this very moment, God is seeing each and every one of us. And further than seeing us, He knows what you're thinking. Amen. I say He knows what you're thinking. Yes, that is the power of the omnipotent God. Hallelujah. All powerful. He knows all about it. Yes. So who thinks they're smart? <coughs> Meet a smart man. He named Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> yes. Glory to God. I just want to say our God. Our God reigns. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So, as he says, <coughs> let us hear, Solomon says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Yes. You know, today, I can't talk to Narayan anymore. I can't tell. You can't hear me. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, I thank God for the years we knew him and for the times we knew him. He was an honest and a sincere man. Amen. 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 And I could make a boast today in that I believe it is my sincere belief that he is gone to heaven. Amen. 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 <laughs> so every one of us know that this day I could speak to you. Amen. I can tell you it is appointed unto man wants to die but after this coming the judgment amen. Amen. amen so beloved the bible says make your calling and election sure amen it don't know maybe you know i, I might make it and it have no might amen amen is not a, a maybe I will make it, you know. Well, let me have some fun, live it up. And uh, let me tell you something none of us has tomorrow in our hands. Mm -hmm. Who knew, you know, <coughs> brother Narayan? Um, nobody knew, amen. amen. It is a sudden thing, amen. amen. It was. Why I used to see this man so he, and he, and he always looking good. Amen. Amen. Well dressed, always neat. Amen. Amen. Yes. And uh, when this thing occurred, nobody was expecting it. Even his wife was sharing with me. You know, she didn't think that it would have happened. Who think? 70, 74 years is not, a old, is not an old man. He has a lot of years. Amen. And he could have continued. But the Lord, the Lord said, Hey, it's time, boy. I said, It's time. You don't know what tomorrow holds. Yes, so, beloved brethren, as King Solomon said, <coughs> yeah, he will bring everything into judgment. Amen. So, I urge you, humble yourself. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Some of us think that we're highly educated. 
we are bright, we know it all. But you know what Jesus said? It will be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. You know the size of a, a needle's eye? <laughs> Amen. So the disciples say, well, <clears throat> well then who, who will enter heaven? It's an impossibility. Hey. But my Bible says, with man, it may be impossible. But uh, let me let you know, with God, all things are possible. Amen. So it is not impossible for a rich man to enter heaven. God could turn that man like thread. Amen. Amen. And pass him through the needle line. Amen. Come on, are you with me now? Amen. I'm not speaking uh, uh, ludicrous. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be rich. <coughs> our, our brother. King Solomon was the richest man ever set foot on the face of this earth. Amen. King Solomon. Amen. And he went to heaven. Yes, Lord. So let me tell you something. The Bible says, if riches increase, set not your heart on it. Amen. Don't set your heart on it. Set your heart on God. Amen. Amen. And thank him for the riches. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to be wrapping up now. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Brethren, it is very important for you, for me, for us. To consider what am I doing with my life? Because one of these days, God will call us home, just as He called Narain home. Amen. Amen. Well, today we believe <clears throat> Narain is in heaven. I believe that he went to meet the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, mind you, everybody will go back to meet the Lord, you know. Yes. Amen. Everybody. But then, there is a decision that God will make whether you go to heaven or you go to hell. Amen. Yes. There is a heaven to gain and a hell to shock. Amen. Every, according to what you do, whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. Amen. So if you do good, do good, do good unto all men, he says. Do good unto all men. Especially those that are of the household of faith. Hey. You better do good to me. Amen. <laughs> you have blessings. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. The servants of God <coughs> is special. They are special in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Emma. The servants of God are specially chosen in the sight of God. However, all men, he said, do good unto all men. And in conclusion, <coughs> let me let you know, according to our God, you see, different gods, the gods of this world, say different things but the true and the living God 
one God and one mediator between God and man. He declares it is there is one word, one word, which covers everything. Amen. In order for you to get to heaven, it is to exercise L-O-V-E, love. Amen. <coughs> love covering a multitude Amen. of sins. Amen. Amen. So, beloved brethren, learn. Not, we're not talking about what the world call love, you know. I have a sister, I love you today, you know. And as you, you, you see somebody else, I love you now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no. Your heart must be fixed on what is called the agape love. Amen. The agape love is the God type love. It is a love <coughs> without reservation. That's right. Amen. 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 And I heard several people talk about Brother Narayan today. Amen. Amen. And boy, I believe that because love prevailed in his life, he will be with the Lord. Amen. So, I urge you today to love. Amen. Love. Live in love. Amen. The true love. The agape love. Yeah. I want to thank God this evening for his word. And I do hope that this word touch your hearts and would cause you, you know, it would be a blessing to meet Narayan again. Hallelujah. Are you, do you believe that you could meet him again? Amen. Yes! According to God's word. So, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love, beloved. Let us love one another, First John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another. Who knows it? Sing it with me. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another, First John 4, 7 and 8. Hallelujah. 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 Beloved brethren, as we, I share this word today, I want you to remember First John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 in your Bible in any Bible, in every Bible, amen. You could underline it and memorize it. And I love it so much that I love to sing it, amen. amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I pray this today that you will commit your life so that we will, when we, you know, there's a song, when we all get to heaven. Amen. What a day of rejoicing that will be. What a day of rejoicing when we all get to heaven to meet.
brother Narain. Amen. Amen. So this time, I just want to, to close a short word of prayer. Father and God, as we bow before you, we humbly come asking, O oh Lord, for every individual soul, Lord, that you touch the hearts of men and women, children, Lord, let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And then, Father, we pray that you be glorified. Bless, O oh Lord, this congregation today. Yes, Lord. Bless them, Lord, and cause that they would prosper and be in good health until you call them home as you have called Brother Narai. I give you praise and thanks for your blessings. Bless us now. Bless us, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. God bless you. I hand right back to the members of the family or somebody. Thank you. Pastor, I just want to let you guys know that uh, once again, thank you guys for all coming, and uh, you know, God bless us all for coming here, being here for my father, and uh, we're gonna have like whoever didn't uh, came to the body from five to six, you guys can come up and say your last goodbyes to my dad, and uh, you all friends and family are welcome back to the family home. It's on the card for some refreshments afterwards. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Uh, a lot of thank yous have been handed out and well deserved. Thanks for the past the main event this evening for that touching and sincere message. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to take the vote of thanks a step in another direction. You know, my brother always tells me he was there for my father's last breath. Well, I'm thankful to Richard for asking me to come. Thank you. Amen. And see and speak with Uncle Narang before he crossed that line Amen. of life and death. Because when, when my father passed away 12 years ago, he was the best and the closest thing I had to a body. So I felt I was there for my father. And I know where he's going. Those will be the guys that welcome him, my dad, my grandfather, who oh, I was fortunate to know a little bit before he had passed away. My grandmother, and I was reminded of uh, Uncle Rodolfo. So, those guys, and uh, Chatashani, their seniors and his family that have moved on, crossed that line, and are preparing, busy preparing a home there. And it ain't going to be a small home. Knowing Uncle Narang, knowing the rest of that family, he's going to be in, a, in good hands. Uh, over the past couple of days and ever since uh, Uncle Narang has been in the hospital, and there are some people who I've seen, and I feel it's only, I don't know, this thing is strange to me, but I've seen some people really stepped up. First, um, uh, Auntie Alice's sister, Uncle Lincoln's wife. She's, somewhere around here 
I know you've been there uh, for Auntie Ellis. That was a tremendous thing. Uh, I feel like you have nothing else to do but be there knowing that that's the best you could have done at that time. And then I, as I go in there every night by the house, the past couple of nights I see uh, Auntie TV, Auntie Hema, you know, giving out coffee and tea and open out and show being there during the day with, uh, with Auntie Alice and for Richard and Romel. You know, Richard said to me, I have no experience with this thing. I said, don't worry, I don't have either. <laughs> but we're, we're going to pull through. I am so impressed. I think you guys, both you and Romel, leading the way here today and ever since from the Rhine was in the hospital. I'm impressed. I'm totally impressed. And I'm sure he is too. Keep the work up and be there for your mom, which I don't even have to tell you. And, and lastly, everyone who I'm sure didn't have this particular event or moment or time on your schedule any time over the past week, but you put it whatever you had to decide to be here with this family to celebrate these last few minutes of Uncle Narayan's life. I like it. The pastor said he was a man who liked to celebrate. He was an honest and sincere man, and it showed in his presence in church. That's going to go with him. That definitely will go with him. And I'd like to come back to the, the occasion you mentioned when he renewed his vows. If that's not an example of a sincere and honest man, I don't know what else is. Yes. Uh, at this time, I know, Richard, I beg to excuse. I would like to ask Robin, who had some delay, and, and he's very close to this family, passes by our the gate there every day, we'll see how Uncle Narayan and say, I'll look him an and the first one is, I'm going to ask Robin to kind of close things up and throw in his last piece. Thank you, Donna. You're welcome. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. You know, it's not such of a good evening because of the loss of a loved one. But nevertheless, like Pastor was saying, to be absent from the body is to be present to the Lord. There's no better place to be than to be with the Lord. Amen. And we know that he was a man of God. And that's exactly where he would have wanted to be. Because he spent a lot of his life serving God and doing what is right. You know, um, I joined this family many years ago. Came to New York in 2001. And from the day I met him, he never treated me as though if I was ever a stranger. He always embraced me, he had a good word to say. And from that moment, you know, that this was just an ordinary person. This was a person of God. Because for you to be a person of God, you have to express that love. Sometimes we don't always get it right. But because we're human beings and we can fall, fall short, so many ways. We want to say that Brother Narayan, as I know him as Uncle Buddy, was a good person. And so is his family. And I want to, you know, ask God to give them strength to endure this time of their loss. May God continue to be with them. Just before I go, I have a little poem I want to share with you guys. Um, and it goes like this May you always walk in sunshine and God around you flow. For the happiness you give us, no one will ever know. It broke our heart to lose you, but you did not go alone. A part of us went with you the day God called you home. A million times we need you, a million times we cry. If love could only have saved you, you would have never died. 
The Lord be with you, and may you rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you who didn't get a chance to come by and view the body earlier, feel free to step up and, and even if you saw the body before and would like to come around, we'll, we'll leave this portion here open for the viewing. Yeah, he told me. I'm gonna tell them. I gotta, I gotta double the hugs now. Do you know? Yeah, true. I know, right? Oh, yeah. oh my God, it's the fun game. <laughs> you look different every time. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. You got that, you got that cord? I gave it to Angie. She, she said the broker wants to say a word or two mm -hmm. in Canada, so I think she wants to do like a Zoom or something. Okay, so I'm going to just disconnect. You plug into phone, I plug into the bottom because before I damaged iPhone equipment. I'm not sure it was in every or wrong way. Sorry guys. Huh. Technical. Oh, I did fire it. Did it? Oh, I just missed it. Oh, we're saying hi to you guys. Oh, 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 oh,
Oh yeah, he's over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's over there. <laughs> I wanted to have more. I could have. I could even put it up. Like I could have like the videos and stuff of those guys. So I just mostly leave him on. There's a lot of videos in the ground. A lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Uh, <laughs> There's always something Probably skip that one because then you know, my mom is going to probably get killed me. Always with that, always with that. Always with that. Always with that. I love that. I love that. Yeah, you want to watch it, right? I can put on the slideshow, so I'll move the camera over here.
Uncle Sonny. That's the man. Don't let your brother go astray. Just told me now. He just told me now. I'm going to walk about that. I'm going to go to the office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget this. Don't forget this thing. Yes, you know that is very important. That is gold. The essence of that man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we're going to meet you guys over there later. We're going to head out there. I know, I know, I know they got like certain rules or only a certain amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's gonna have to cards. Only three cards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, that's no problem. Yeah. 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 We'll definitely be using like one card for all of us. I think that's true. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's a lot of people. I pulled those videos. I watched that. It's really good. Yeah, we got to see it. Shine, man. Yeah. So I was from here and my two brothers. Okay. Pack them into one yeah. card. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, then whoever else. Yeah. Because he got a big support here too. Oh, that's right. Message, yeah. It keeps that timing out on her. <laughs> Let me do it right now. Get the specific time for the morning. I remember.
my brother's a cop, so he's he's a cop. So we'll work in the money. She just sent me something that um, if you go in front, we will see Uncle Brian. If you go in front of the camera, so I don't know. I don't understand. You need thing. you need her because I don't really know. Yeah, just FaceTime it's easier. FaceTime her. Talk fast, swafty, and FaceTime. So at least you can use your phone. Because I have no clue how. She said you will see Papa on Zoom. This we, is not my my, my forte. We need your daughter. Oh yeah, no, she's out in and out. Take care. Take care, my love. You can't take her sometimes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, guys. Hi, Bonnie. Take care. You know me? No, No, because she got a she got a prep. Oh, there she goes. Yeah. But it came off. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yes, that is, that is. There. yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's showing there. She but said it, it's become... intermediate. Oh, yeah. That's, not... oh, yeah. huh? That's part I've of the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. She Hi. wants to see this screen. That's, we want to see that screen. Um, um, yes. What do you mean? Yeah. That's Uncle Bonan Antisabi. That's, that's, cool. that's as big as it gets. Oh, that's as big as it gets. Yeah. Oh, she's fighting. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, no. Where, where, where am I, who am I seeing here? No, I... That's Auntie, she's going to... Auntie? I can't. I can't ask the girl, call the girls and ask them. I don't know, you never talked to her. How did she get here? How did she get here? Huh? Oh, well, how goes it about her? Oh, she's in the flat? So go with her. Would you feel that she can sit with you and you want to go this with her? Is, is that bond there? She's... Yeah. Please be safe. Look, one is right here. Yeah. I don't know if you've expressed such a big car. Do not stay close. Okay, I'll go trust them. You just let me know when you get home. Okay. Hi, Bon. Be safe. Okay, you get home. I don't know if you to I was trying to say it's time to put the phone closer, mm. but I don't like the app. And she can watch it. She's fine. Yeah, she's fine. 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 I'm just going to go down Sandra, okay? Well, okay. I'm just going to go down Sandra, then Sandra speaks up. No, that's I not good. That's not the way. She'll be up. She can go. I heard her. I don't know how to want to put her in the middle of the night like that, you know. So she has no one else can drive to? No. I hope you come. I don't know. I really don't know. She drive and come. Maybe I should call them. Huh? Maybe I should call. And you want me to drive home? 
We'll go check the milk cream and go tell them to do it. I'm going to probably leave all the gear for tomorrow morning. Check your phone for sure. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. So, you got any answers? Yeah, yeah, I got, I got it on my phone. Give it to you after. But okay. I just called it. I just called it. Just giving it forward to the place. Forward to the cemetery. Okay. Another. So, uh, yes, they passed by the house. Oh, good. That's what I'm doing. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's. And uh, 10 15, they're gonna leave. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 10 10. Yeah, you leave right there. Yep. Yeah. And we just follow that. We just follow. Them. That's it. That's all I need to know. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I got it. Okay, that's it. Okay, so she knew it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was the, you guys already noted it. It's a radio note. Yeah. So who else was flying? I'm not sure those guys would drive out. Won't we'll see us. Okay. One turn. Okay. I'm gonna see if those guys were gonna come out. I'm not sure. Oh, that's that. I doubt it. Yeah. Whoever else, right? Well, maybe they can do the phone. Yeah, Tink to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. Hopefully I didn't botch speech. Huh? Hopefully I didn't botch. <laughs> yeah. Wow, it's a beautiful picture. Stay right there, stay right there. Sit down, sit down. Oh my god, this is a beautiful picture. Yeah. Stay right there. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Alright, I won't take out my phone out of my pocket. Oh, we got a red chat. Still a red chat. Hold on, I'm coming back. Awesome. I'll put that back over there. Yeah. Beautiful. Love you, Mom. Mom. Alright. Yeah. Oh, my God. Awesome. Let me show you that. Not much of a sitter, man. <laughs> that was really good. That was really good. Really, really awesome. Yeah, I see, I see. I see. Okay. 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 No, you need to take a picture with your first and bloody. Yeah, I don't. I want to take one from my memory, yeah? Okay, I got you, bro. Pictures should be taken in landscape. Yeah. Take everybody who's going. I'll do both. I'll do landscape and portrait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you gonna have this guy next year or is that solo? Sean. Take me a picture here first. That's his camera. Oh, I don't care. Can we go back home? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got him all right. Yeah, no, no, we just find him. Okay. I got all that stuff. Okay. <laughs>
She's gonna drop you home, and then we're gonna we're about to close up right now because be punctual on the time because we don't want to spill over. So we're gonna start moving everybody out. But uh, guys, yeah, everybody come together. Let me take a picture for everybody. Hey, let me okay. Do you think I got it? Yes. Okay. Let me take. You guys stand right here. You guys a good shot. You can't go in the picture like that, right? Everything else stays here, so I shut everything down. All right, that's the end.